What, well, what do you want me? Uh, I don't know. How, I guess that's fine. So Have anyway, you got the background. Yeah, yeah, got the background. Okay. So anyway, I'm in Townsville. Uh, a lot of folks back home will know uh, I'm over here just in vacation, and I've come to a a, a native uh, celebration. And uh, this this man here, this brother here, is going to tell us a little bit about it. What's this about? Could you tell folks? Yes, well, first off, welcome, of course. Thanks to, very uh, much. To Aboriginal Australia. Thank you. Uh, today is a very significant day for our people all around Australia. It's the 20th anniversary of the Mabo decision by the High Court of Australia. And that decision was the first time in Australian law that there's been recognised that the first peoples of Australia, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, have legal rights which existed before colonisation and which can be recognised in Australian law. So it's a landmark decision. We, we had no treaties, uh, there was no other legal recognition of us as the First Peoples. So 20 years ago on this day, um, Eddie Mabo, or known as Kweki Mabo, uh, won his case in the High Court that he owned his lands and his territories and that is now applied for our people across all of Australia. And uh, now on the 20th anniversary we're remembering that decision but also we're fighting for the fact that there's more to be done, that this, this decision has been eroded and uh, more has to be done to make sure that our rights are properly protected and recognised in Australia. Well, I, I was reading about him uh, sitting in a bar and refusing to move. Do you know about that story? Oh, look, uh, this is the stories of our life and existence in Australia, that we, uh, we basically had a banning of um, Aboriginal peoples from wider society. Our movement and so on was controlled as recently as up to 1984 in some of the states and territories. And um, th this was a common thing about uh, if you walked in and you, uh, into a bar where Aboriginal people were not being seen, you would get ignored or you would get the police calling to kick you out. It wasn't just bars, it applied to hospitals, it applied to um, other public uh, areas and so on where our people were being um, marginalised and segregated from the main population. Yeah, well, it was a lot like the southern United States, of course. I, I think everywhere in the world where there's Indigenous peoples there's been this history the problem in Australia is that there were no treaties that were ever made mm. and so the history has continued on of colonisation mm. and it's only been very, very recently in, in the, li the lifetime of people here that change has occurred. But again, it's so why this is so important, this 20th anniversary, because it was that landmark decision in the High Court by Eddie Mabo that made these changes. Well, I, when I was here four years ago, I was, I was fascinated by reading about the history and... Um, I read about this policy of the Australian government that came under a lot of criticism, the intervention, and I read in, I think it was the Australian, which is Murdoch's press, uh, a, an Aboriginal woman um, named uh, uh, Bessie Price, who is supporting this this policy. What's your, your view of it? Can you tell people a little bit about that? Yes, I can. In fact, um, some of the people who watch this video may know that in 2007, the United Nations adopted, after 25 years' work, the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. So for the first time around the world, our peoples, Indigenous peoples in up to 80 different countries around the world, had the right of peoples of self-determination. In Australia, ironically, the very same time, the government was passing laws which are called the intervention laws, which intruded into the lives of Aboriginal people living in the Northern Territory and took away many of their rights. Um, and it gave great powers to police and to the army and so on to control um, Aboriginal communities and so on. It would take a while to describe all of these things that happened as yeah. a result of these laws. But that was only five years ago the intervention was created. Now we find, um, after that intervention period has been running out in, in the legislation, the government wants to extend it now for another 10 years. And this is where the outrage is because these are discriminatory laws. They are, they are against, they, they're treating us racially different. So the rule of law in Australia is being breached. Um, and they're targeting our people on the basis of race to create alcohol prohibitions, to create income management arrangements, and so on. It's a, it's a complete outrage and offence upon freedoms of peoples based upon race. And it's happening here and now in Australia. And it's under the guise of De of, of resolving a crisis that, right? Well, it's it's what um, is that correct? It's what colonisers have been trying to do for four to five hundred years: save the people from themselves. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. work. 
and it will never work and it should not be the sort of thing that happens in Australia. Now best price is an Aboriginal person, an individual who's getting up and saying these things should happen, that she wants our people to be oppressed under these laws. That's one person's opinion. Um, I don't know of anybody else besides Best Price who's saying this, but she gets all the attention from the news media, from the government and, the right and so on. So despite what 500,000 other people are saying, the government can't hear that. They're listening to one person who doesn't want this law to apply to her, she wants it to apply to all the other Aboriginal Island people now. Yeah. That's a betrayal of our peoples by an individual. Um, I'm not going to criticise any person for their opinions, yeah. but it has to be put in the right context. Yeah. This is not what our peoples are saying or calling for. Well, I, in the piece I read today, like I said, and you, you responded so uh, just right on the button, for me to read it, of course, and her life, the way she described her life and what happened to her, it was very moving and powerful. But on the other hand, and you said to me, well, that's all about lives. <laughs> it's not just hers. And at the end of it, um, one thing that did strike me was she says, which is common among conservatives, is that, well, it's our problem and it's our basically blaming ourselves and we, we have to solve it and this sort of thing. It's didn't see. I wasn't very impressed with that. Well, well that's right. The emotional part of the best wrote about how she was born and brought up and, and the disadvantages she suffered is the story of every Aboriginal Island person in this country. We all have our stories to tell, including um, killings of our people by police and uh, the imprisonment of our people uh, in jails, the poor health services, the discrimination in housing. All of these are stories that everybody carries around with them, so Bess is not unique in that sort of thing. What is different? Uh, from what Bess is saying is the answer is control over our lives, is being given back our lives and freedoms that were taken away at the time of colonisation and that we get to make decisions about who we are, about what our future is, about how our future generations should be raised in terms of culture and language and so on. That has to come back to us, that's our right. As it is for everybody else in the world, we have a say about what, who we are, what we are and what our future shall be. Well, a few, just a couple more things. Um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I was going to say about. Um, mm, slipped my mind for a second. But I grew up in England, you know, and there were two famous. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you about um, the terminology. Aboriginal is is that's the t general terminology that most um, native people in this country would use, and it's. Look, there's a, since the colonisers arrived, they've had to use terms to describe us. It's not the terms we use to describe ourselves, the terms they use. So we've been called natives, coloureds, darkies, aborigines, aboriginals, and so on. Um, if I was talking to a colleague of mine from this area here, I would refer to us as Murrays. Uh, that's our Aboriginal language word. Mm. For, if I was talking to a colleague of mine down in Brisbane, I would call us Guris. If I was talking in Sydney, I would call us Kuris. If I was talking in West Australia, I'd call us Noongars. If I was yeah. talking in other places, it'd be Yimitis or another word. So we have our own way of referring to ourselves and our identity. Um, but uh, the common terminology in the English language is Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people in Australia. Okay, well, I'll wrap it up here with two things. One of them, growing up in England, you know, that I grew up in England and there are two famous Aboriginal people, if you like, for me. One was Yvonne Goolagong, <laughs> who I remember as a child, and uh, the actor who was in Rabbit Proof Fence. Uh, I, that guy, he's 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 famous sort of worldwide. I'd I be guess. surprised if you haven't heard of Kathy Freeman. I um, haven't. I mean, I live in America though, so you got yeah, well, you Kathy, got. To... Kathy Freeman was the uh, gold medal winner oh, in the Sydney right. Olympics in the 400 right. meters. So Kathy's very famous too. That's right. Um, and this is very good. And uh, often uh, Australians will rely upon these individual achievements to talk about Reconciliation Australia. But the truth is that while we have individual people like Elon Gordon or Kathy Freeman or um, actors and so on who are getting recognition, um, half of our population is incarcerated in prisons. Even though we're 2% of the population, 60% of the Aboriginal youth in detention in Australia, 60% um, of the youth in detention are Aboriginal youth. How do you explain that? Um, 25 to 30 percent of the adult Aboriginal males, in, uh, uh, adult males in prison are Aboriginal people, even though we're 2 percent of the population. And up to 80 or 90 percent of the women in jails around this country are Aboriginal women, even though we're 2 percent. Yeah. So there's these individual achievements that get lauded, but the reality is, scratch the surface, look at the real thing in here. We're a society that, uh, that has been denied its rights, that have been robbed of our lands. Being, uh, we're being robbed of our culture and we're being oppressed in the economic systems of Australia. We're living as poor people in our own country while Australians are living as the wealthiest people in the world by mining our lands and growing 
uh, produce on our land, we get nothing from that. We get none of the benefits. Yeah, so that's the reality when you scratch. It is, and it's very similar in America. Of course, over 50 percent of the prison population are, are people of colour. And uh, so just uh, lastly, I've just eaten kangaroo meat for the first time. It's wonderful. I'm going to go get some more. And I'd like to know who, if you could just tell everybody who you are. My name is Les Melzer. I uh, am the co-chair of the National Coalition of Australia's First Peoples. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Les. It's great. Thank you. Okay. Thank Bye. You.